leaves and they have a fall foliage there. Um, but I was on a stretch that's um, um, uh, quite a ways from there at about 7,000 foot level. And uh, it's an area that probably, I never saw anyone when I was hiking out that way. So there's probably less than 100 people a year go out through there. And it's just absolutely gorgeous mountains, just take your breath away. And I'm, I'm going along out there one day, and I've got a, I had just come in from uh, McKittrick, and I had about a 50 or 60 pound pack on. And um, I'm just trucking along, and all of a sudden I hear a buzzing sound right, right next to my left foot. And I was moving so fast, I was going slightly downhill, and I wasn't able to stop for a few steps. And I turned around, and I saw um, a little uh, blacktail rattler, and my footprint was in the gravel less than an inch away from where he was. And uh, so I immediately started saying some choice words, and I took <laughs> off my pack, and I sat down, and I you know, took off my boot and rolled up my pants leg and took down my sock to see if I'd been hit. And I wasn't, I hadn't been. And he's still sitting there, you know, buzzing away. <laughs> and um, I thanked him for not biting me. Um, people don't realize how hard it is to get a rattlesnake to bite you. Um, contrary to what you hear, they want nothing to do with you. Um, they, they know that we're trouble, and they, uh, they try to avoid us. And even when they do bite, the statistics I've read say 80% of all bites are dry bites, where they don't give you any venom. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they just want to get you away, away from them. They want to save their venom for tasty mice and all that. So, <laughs> so um, uh, number one, they probably won't bite, and when they do, it's probably not going to be any poison in the bite. We had a lady get hit right in the calf by a big western diamondback down in the low country. They took her to the hospital in El Paso, and not a trace of venom in there. And I saw her walking around the next day. So. Mm -hmm. Um, snakes are our friends, whether we realize it or not. They're part of the balance of nature, and they, they help keep the mice and the bugs under control. Um, but after, when that snake um, started buzzing as I was right next to him, mm -hmm. I was, I don't know, seven or eight miles from the, the nearest people. And I knew how lucky I was. You know, it, it could have been a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And um, I was talking to myself for the rest of that morning when I was walking <laughs> along the trail, um, realizing that, um, I had been, I had been blessed. I had been lucky. And of course, Mr. Snake was all upset. He was just minding his own business, hanging out there. <laughs> and this big monster comes blundering along. <laughs> this is a, a Native American drone flute, and this is a, a piece I wrote about the Guadalupe. It's called, it's called Tejas Canyon, one of my favorite places in the mountains there. <laughs>
stays on the uh, on the trail as a ranger are uh, <coughs> relatively uneventful. You know, there's a lot of strenuous hiking and, and doing your job and um, just getting being um, around some of the most amazing, amazingly beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life. But um, there were some days that were a little different. <coughs> One morning, I, uh, it was in the summertime, and I uh, wanted to get out really early. It was my day to, um, to leave the trail. I usually go in on Thursday mornings, stay for five days and four nights, and then head out again on Mondays, at midday. And I went down a trail called a Bush Mountain Trail. I shouldn't say down, it was sort of up and down, and Bush Mountain is one of the highest mountains out there, a little over 8,000 feet. And, um, I was watching my feet. It's something you do when you're in the desert or in the Florida swamps, for that matter. You don't want to. You don't want to step on a snake. That's the way to get bit. Mm -hmm. um, and you just want to be. You want to be careful where you're putting your feet. Um, people say about the Guadalupe is that everything out there um, either has fangs or sharp points or claws or <laughs> toxic points of one kind or another. All the plants and the animals. Um, but I. I was always. Um, I had a lot less things bad happen to me up there than I've had in civilization. So. <laughs> um, when I was uh, in the, the Guadalupe wilderness, no one ever um, broadsided my car at 65 miles an hour and spun me around. Um, but that's a whole other story. Um, so I'm going up and down the, the, the ridges on Bush Mountain Trail, heading towards Bush Mountain, watching my feet, and I'm going up a little rise, and thank God I looked up. Because about 20 feet in front of me, at about eye level, all I could see was a black tail with a white stripe and a pink puckered butt. <laughs> <laughs> and little hind feet just bum, 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 bum. It was a big desert skunk. Oh, wow. And he didn't like me. <laughs> and it's amazing how fast you can move when you have to. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was back down that trail like, um, like what's the, the sprinter's name now? Adrian Bolt from Jamaica. <laughs> And if I had gone just a few steps farther, I would have got it full in the face. <laughs> and it would have been a long, long, long trip back down to the, uh, the ranger station. And I'm sure I would have, I would have lived the ranger lore forever and ever. <laughs> but um, I stood back there and I'm going, oh God, oh God, oh God. And I'll, finally Skunk, he just got tired of watching me and he just went bottling off. He was very triumphant. <laughs> he was the dude. And, um, so for the rest of that day, not only was I washing my feet, but I was looking up. <laughs> so, again, I was I was quite lucky.